Hi guys, it's Brian and we're doing a final on our Ming build. Uh, we didn't do a Tiger, we did a Ming. Uh, so we did the Titanic. This is a fun, fun little kit, guys. Uh, I know that all the Ming stuff out there and Tiger stuff is a lot of fun to build, but this one, the one I did, so I know it's fun. <laughs> um, so yeah, we started off with a Titanic kit, but we didn't do a Titanic. We did her sister ship, the Britannic. And once again, this is a printout of a photograph of a painting. So uh, the detail on that is a little sparse um, and haphazard, but um, an artist's interpretation, of course. So uh, we did do a couple little changes here and there because um, we got some comments from folks that uh, that really helped us out. Uh, we found out that the funnels actually weren't this goldish color here they're more they're more of an actual uh, buff color so we did make that change and then uh, i want to say also thank you to our buddy travis weeks down in um south africa uh he had some really good advice for us about the uh the crosses the crosses here uh he said that they were uh metal crosses that were added on there they were three-dimensional and they think they had lights behind them so they can be seen at night as well as green lighting all down the side of the ship uh, as per um, the rules of engagement for World War One, I, I suppose, for naval combat. And then also I want to say thank you to Mr. Ken Kreppen because he gave us a link that we'll have down below, uh, a, a video, it's a th uh, CGI video of the three ships and the differences between them, and that helped us out a lot too. So thank you very much, guys, for those. Uh, give me a nice uh, little shout out there. So here is our version, the Britannic. Um, now... There are several differences between the Britannic and the Titanic that are external differences and a lot of them that were internal differences. We're not going to address any internal differences. <laughs> um, the external differences uh, were certain things like there was, of course, more lifeboats and they had bigger davits on board uh, to help out with the multiple lifeboat stacking that they had done. Uh, but uh, scratch building, all that stuff just wasn't going to be in our wheelhouse, quite literally. So we... Um, we just decided to stick with uh, a modified paint job of the Titanic to resemble the Britannic as a hospital ship. Um, in the back, there's supposed to be a, uh, a little morgue that was uh, quickly built back here. Uh, we didn't do that either, um, but uh, I mean, it's something I can always uh, add on later when my scratch building skills get a little bit more, I get a little more comfortable with that, I should say. Um, this, this, um, docking bridge back here would be really easy to just pop off and then put a, put a little box underneath there but in the meantime we're just going to leave her as she is um, we did do some custom detail uh, detail decal printing and we'll show you here on the stern we did the britannic name and we just printed this out on uh, testers decal paper uh, we did do the crosses here those are printed out also uh, and then of course we did the britannic name up here on the bow and, um, oh, I almost forgot the most important bit, the registry number up here underneath the wheelhouse. Um, those are really easy for us to do because we, um, we just took measurements off the existing decals for the set uh, and then um, used those. And then I, I do a cheat. I go to avery.com where you print out your shipping labels and stuff like that. Well, you can do custom printing labels and stuff. So uh, there's a couple of cheats in there that help you out, and they have measurements so they can tell you actual size because everything on screen is going to be like two-thirds larger or something like that than, than or half again bigger than, than actual reality. So um, actual reality <laughs> so, than it is in real life. So uh, it really helps out with sizing and stuff like that. I just haven't thrown down the money to do anything on like – Adobe Illustrator or whatever they call that stuff because um, I know that if I ever got a, a, a program like that I would spend all of my time just goofing around making my own decals or whatever anyway I digress so uh, the video link that I'll have down below will I think will be the one talking about how the uh, Britannic had several differences uh, like we mentioned the uh, the davits and then also how the Britannic had multiple expansion joints whereas the Titanic had I think just three uh, the Britannic had several, several more to help out with flexing of the hull and stuff while sailing. Uh, something that they didn't really recognize was an issue because the Titanic and, and Olympic and uh, Britannic were some of the longest ships ever made at that point. They weren't too sure about how they were going to handle going through uh, heavy seas and hitting peaks and troughs and stuff like that. So they added some expansion joints to the Titanic 
and, uh, and then they added some more to the Britannic to help her sail more smoothly. But um, other internal differences for the Britannic was uh, the double hull was, was raised up higher. It went to the top of the boiler room area rather than just, I think, halfway up or something. So you had a double bottom, but I don't remember if she had a double hull on the Titanic. Uh, but they did raise that up. And then, um, let's see here. Oh, something I found that was absolutely fascinating was that because she never saw transatlantic service, she was pressed into military service right after being finished, that they had gone back and stripped out all the wood paneling and all the decor and everything out of all the rooms, and that was all put into storage at Harlan and Wolf. And then uh, after she had sank, uh, they auctioned off all that material, and um, there are houses in the UK and Europe that are decorated with bits from the, from the Britannic herself. So it's fascinating to know that that type of lineage is still going on out there. Uh, for the top, we uh, we did change the funnel color from camel yellow to buff, and then uh, left it flat so that we could do some uh, some some chalk uh, pastel, I should say, uh, weathering on top of those. I did leave the masts a little bit on the dirty side because I figured that you know she was they they were hurrying, getting her ready to be a hospital ship, so they probably just slapped on a coat of paint on the outside. To, to give her the white hull with the green stripe and then uh, slapped on the, uh, the the crosses up there and then uh, set her afloat. And I, I, it was too bad that she didn't survive the war. It's uh, it's a pity. But um, again, it was a fun build. I had a lot of fun doing this. Thanks again to our Colonel Reb and Papa Dan for hosting this. You can count on me for next year because uh, Colonel Reb and I have been talking about doing each one doing the rest of the ship's uh, so doing a Titanic version and an Olympic version each. So uh, I think that's going to be a lot of fun in the future. Uh, we've already got some plans working for uh, for each one. So we'll see how that goes. Everybody, thanks again for tuning in. We're going to go ahead and sign off now. Let you guys get back to your Thursday, and we'll talk to you a little bit later on. All right, take it easy, and we'll see you later. Bye now.